Okay, now let's consider a very simple choice uh, problem. Okay, very, very simple one. So suppose that my decision maker, my individual, is supposed to choose between three alternatives called A, B, and C. Um, so you can generate your own example, but my example is the following. Well, because you know uh, all the courses and, and the teaching and the learning are online, I know I need a uh, faster internet. So I was thinking of you know switching to Fido internet with 150 megabyte per seconds download speed, uh, which is like $75 versus uh, the Rogers is offering 500 megabyte per second, uh, much faster internet and, and, and a much faster uh, upload speed, but at a price of $105. And then there's a one gigabyte internet, which is like $20 more expensive. So the question is, which alternative I am going to pick? Uh, well, normally I just pick one, right? A, B or C. Uh, but let's suppose we do the following uh, uh, experiment with our decision maker and we ask him the following questions. It's like we give him a questionnaire and he answers these uh, questions. So we ask him the following. So suppose that I give you these two alternatives, A and B, all right? C is not available. It's off the picture. Uh, so I know you're going to be maybe upset because that might be your best choice. But let's suppose it is off the picture. So what would you pick? All right. Uh, tell me. And let's say he tells me that he's going to pick A. Good. Well, now another hypothetical uh, situation. Uh, let's say, I'm sorry, uh, that was not B. It's let's say it is C. So I'm going to giving you the option of choosing between A and C. So then what would you pick? Well, let's suppose he still says A. All right. Very well. Uh, what about if I give you um, B and C, what would you pick? Well, then let's suppose he says uh, he's going to pick B. All right. So very good. Uh, what I would say, given all this information, I can map this into something else, which we call preference relation. How do I do this mapping? Well, I define a, some mathematical notion uh, for this transformation. What is this? Uh, it's a binary relation. Remember, we talked about binary relation in math review. So if you don't remember, please go back to the math review videos and, 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 and have a look at it. So a binary relation is basically uh, relates uh, one alternative with another one. All right. So that's the idea. So and this is how we define it formally. So if it's a conditional statement, if you choose x when both x and y were available, well then I am going to conclude out of this behavior is that you think x is at least as good as y for you. All right. So x may be strictly better, uh, but it is at least as good as y. All right. So it cannot be the case that Y is better than X, right? If, if you think Y is better than X, you shouldn't be picking X. That, that would be awkward. So therefore, X is at least as good as Y. So this at least as good as Y is like greater than or equal to. All right. So instead of writing at least as good as Y again and again, instead we denote it this way x at least as good as y and read it this way or alternatively some textbook and sometimes I also do the same thing. We just write it x r y. This is not the real number uh, symbol. Uh, so x is at least as good as y. This is how we read them. All right. So given that this is how I define my binary relation, what do I know? Well, I know that because uh, a was chosen, both A and B were uh, present. So this guy thinks A is at least as good as B. Very good. And here, because A was chosen, he thinks A is at least as good as C. Very well. And here he thinks B is at least as good as C as well. Very good. So if you again uh, look at the binary relations uh, video, uh, you know how we define the relation transitivity. 
And so this binary relation is obviously complete and transitive. So what does that mean? Transitivity is a very nice condition. It basically tells me the following. You can actually rank those alternatives, all right? Because this guy is, uh, I mean, not knowingly maybe, but he is uh, ranking those, all. he's able to rank those alternatives. How so? Well, he thinks A is at least as good as B means like A is either better than or sort of, you know, uh, the same uh, level for uh, with B and and B is at least as good as C and A is at least as good as C so therefore you know what I can rank these alternatives A as being the top choice B as being the second best choice and C is being the worst alternative all right so that is possible uh, so uh, this is sort of the transformation from uh, my my individuals uh, uh, choice behavior to something completely hypothetical. Maybe he has nothing like this in his mind, I know, but he is actually behaving as if he has, as if he has this preference relation. What else? Well, economists, early economists went even further and they said, hey, look, if this is a binary relation and a transitive like this way, in fact, I can create a function, we call it utility function, where uh, the utility of A is higher than utility of B, and then that's higher than utility of C. So let's say utility of A is 10, utility of B is 5, and utility of C is 0. All right. So then we say, well, um, so this guy is making a choice, but you know what? If I sort of create a machine, a robot, uh, and plug this preference relation as this machine's priority list, all right, meaning always choose the alternative that is available and on top of your list. So that's how the robot uh, operates. Well, then this robot with this binary relation or with this utility function, doesn't matter, will, and this individual will always behave the same way, all right? Um, you may ask, well, why this utility function? Well, it's completely random. All it matters is that the A's utility is higher than B's utility, and then that's higher than the C's utility uh, to sort of uh, lead to the same uh, behavioral uh, observations with this preference relation, all right? You may say, well, U bar, where utility of A, U, U bar of A is equal to 100, u bar of b is equal to minus 5, and then u bar of c is equal to minus 500. So again, if I generate a, a robot and plug this utility function and tell that robot pick, always pick the alternative, which maximizes your utility, and at the same time, it's available, well, then this robot this preference relation robot and this individual will behave exactly the same way, all right? So that's uh, sort of the way of generating preference relation and then sort of generating utility functions. So we economists go further than that and basically say, hey, you know what? Um, if we can do that, if we can do this transformation, so there's a, a, a big uh, conditional statement, if we can do this transformation, well, then we don't really need to worry about these, 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 this, this guy's you know, you know, choice sets, you know, behavior, etc. All I need is his utility function, all right? Or, put it differently, I can say, hey, you know what, instead of I uh, keep asking what he would choose, I am going to, if I know, I am going to take his utility function and, and basically this utility function uh, is, is exactly as this guy, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna treat each individual as if it is a utility function or a robot with a utility function. Uh, so I know this is a, a, a very strong and ugly impersonalization, um, uh, but, but yeah, well, that's technically, technically what we do. Uh, but obviously, it's important that how you generate this utility function. Well, everything comes from my our observations of our individual's behavior. Obviously, without knowing this, there's no way knowing the utility function. All right. So one thing which is important uh, is is the following. So here we didn't ask this guy what he would pick uh, if 
we offer him A, B, and C, right? Uh, clearly, I mean, this question is, you know, meaningless. What would you pick if only A is available? I mean, uh, well, obviously, we assume that uh, you are going to pick one of those three alternatives. So there's always an option of, well, you know what, I'm, I'm happy with my current internet speed, so I'm not going to change it. But then that means my initial problem is something like this. I add another alternative O, which is my option, right? The status quo, not doing anything. All right. So uh, for simplicity, I assume three actions, so I don't need the fourth one. So this question is, is meaningless, but this question makes a lot of sense. Now, what would you pick if uh, we offer you all these three alternatives? Well, in order to conclude that, you know, this preference robot and this utility robots behave exactly as this guy, well, this guy should be answering me A, right? Uh, because this is the consistent way of, uh, of, of, of uh, choice. If he would, for example, answered me uh, uh, B or C, I would say, okay, hold on a second, there's something wrong because this guy is not behaving as if my, my robot maximizing this utility or, 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 or my a robot with this preference relation maximizing this preference relation. So there's there's something off here. Um, so we are next more formally defined. What should be a consistent choice behavior? All right. And if it is consistent, can we construct such a binary relation or a utility? all the times, all right? Well, uh, these are very important questions, right? I mean, as a scientist, uh, I mean, whether you were, or you, I mean, a scientist working on physics or chemistry or genetics or, 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 or biology, we always want to understand uh, uh, how something operates, works. Uh, is, is, is there a pattern in the way it works? For example, if, you, if, if, if we look at someone who is doing research on COVID-19 virus, right, what they try to understand is how this virus operates once it enters human body. If you don't understand that, clearly you can't, uh, you can't create a, a vaccination for this virus. So you have to understand how it operates once it enters the body within the cell. So what does it do? How does it do, etc., etc. So the pattern is very important. If, if you look at an astronomer, he tried to look at the patterns of supernobula or, or the stars. So the same for economists. We try to understand the patterns. So uh, by looking at the choice data of my individual, I try to understand the pattern, all right? And so here, the pattern was like, he was choosing A here, A here, B here. Okay, it seems like there's a pattern, but the problem is his pattern is not consistent, all right? So the next important thing is the consistency. Well, you know, it, 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 it is not random. So randomness is kind of problem. Well, not always. We can also model random uh, things, but you know, uh, utterly random uh, behavior is, is 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 hard to study, right? Why is that? Well, because well, it's random. It's 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 not easy to predict it. All right, but by the way, I mean almost, I mean most of the random events have some patterns. Still, I don't know if you have heard of them, but like the random walk. So one assumption is, for example, stock market prices, it seems like random, but actually people uh, sort of test it, um, that, that, that it may actually fit to some uh, 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 stochastic processes like random walk, for example. So, you know, I, what I mean is, is, is that, you know, even a random environment can be modeled, so you can find a trend in a random environment, but um, so we are creating the simplest model. So therefore, for the simplest model, we don't want to look at the random environments. So we want this guy to be consistent or, or sort of 
showing consistent behavior and clearly this is not consistent. Later we will also formally define what we mean by consistent behavior. So one example that is not consistent. So exactly the same environment, there are three alternatives A, B and C and we again ask the same question to this guy, what would you pick? All right, so he tells me that he would pick um, given that we offer him A and B, he would pick uh, A very well. And then we ask him, what would you pick when we give you uh, B and C? And he tells me that he would pick B, exactly the same. And then we tell him to pick something between A and C. And then he tells me that it is C, all right? So now let me tell you what the inconsistency here. So the guy, so I put uh, all three alternatives on here. So this is my A, this is the B, this is the C. So when A and B were the choice variables or the, you know, the choice he needs to pick, he goes for A, all right? And when and B and C were given as a choice, well, he goes for B. So this is why the arrows are towards those alternatives. And when A and C were offered, well, he goes for C. So if you see this arrows, um, well, wherever you start, all right, uh, the, the thing is, oh, there's always a better alternative. So it's, it's circling. In the previous example where the answer here was not C, but it was A, if you remember, if you graph this picture once again, A, B, and C, it was A here because he prefers A to B and it was B here and then it was A here. So sort of wherever you start, uh, if you start at A, you're going to stick to A. If you start at B, you're going to prefer A, you're going to go for A. If you start C, you're going to go for uh, or either B, but then A. I mean, eventually you're going to go for A. So if my current internet is one of those, all right, in this environment, I know what the best alternative is, all right? Here, however, again, if my current internet uh, is, is one of those alternatives, well, then I don't know which one is the best alternative for me. So this is an inconsistent behavior. We haven't defined it formally yet, we will. But why this inconsistency is not a good thing, and so we want to get rid of those inconsistent behaviors. Well, uh, Ariel Rubinstein, uh, has a very nice example and, and his lecture notes are, uh, are online, available, open source. Um, so he has a very nice example, a monkey, think about a monkey in, in a jungle, all right? And there are three trees, all right? And so he needs to pick one of those trees to sleep in. So currently the monkey is on the floor of the uh, forest and it's dangerous to spend the night. So he has to pick uh, one tree. All right, so he starts be, it, it, be, with B, but then he sees A and then jumps to A, but then he sees C jumps to C, but immediately afterwards he's B and then jumps B back again and then A again and then C again. So for the entire night, he you know jumps back and forth between those trees, uh, which is not a good uh, way of spending night. Uh, for your survival, all right? I know this is a bit of a hypothetical example, but there's another argument which we call money pump. So here's the idea. So let's suppose that those preferences are such that they're strict. I mean, this guy prefers A to B, all right? We denote it this way, A script uh, greater than sign. B is strictly better than C and C is strictly better than A. And that means, and also make the following assumption. Let's suppose if A and B are offered, all right, and if the guy holds B in his hand, if I, if I tell him that I'm going to give him, uh, so this is, this is B, so I'm going to give him A, the red one, and charge $1 for this, he will still go for A, all right? So he prefers A way too much than B. So this $1 is not a significant way of changing the preferences. So he's not gonna all of a sudden become preferring B over A. So what does that mean then? So if he has B in his hand, I can offer him A and, uh, and charge him a dollar and he's gonna get A, all right? Well, once he gets A, 
and then I, I know that I can offer him C and charge a dollar and then he's going to accept C. But once he has C, I'm going to offer him B again and charge a dollar and I know he's going to accept because remember, I assume that he strictly prefers. So you got the idea. I will keep charging him and basically, so I am doing three transaction with this guy. Uh, initially B to A, A to C, and then C to B, and then eventually we end up the same place. Uh, the guy was holding B at the first place, all right, and now still holding B and gave me three dollars for nothing, all right. So that's the standard money pump argument. Obviously, I mean, a guy like this shouldn't be surviving. Um, so ev evolutionary, uh, <laughs> such a behavior should be washed out. I don't think so. Uh, it still survives. The naivete survives. Hey. Um, but, you know, so therefore such naive behaviors should be uh, considered inconsistent. And so we get rid of them. And so the next uh, episode, I'm going to define what we mean by consistent behavior. Later, we're going to call it rational behavior, by the way. And so uh, uh, talk about more formally what preference relation is and how we can relate them to utility functions.